Gentlemen, thank you so much. Uh, the session after lunch, the session before lunch is challenging, but I think the challenge after lunch is perhaps more challenging. But hopefully we'll, uh, we'll spend the next uh, 15, 20 minutes having a interesting discussion. I have a few questions in mind. Um, and then we'll open it up to the audience for their thoughts. Um, a lot of people are talking about data, talking about artificial intelligence, machine learning, deep learning, etc. And one of the things that worries organizations most is, the, is their data, the quality, integrity of data. Um, and similarly for blockchain, what blockchain brings to the table is, is that immutability of data. So what I'm going to do is maybe just uh, let you all share your thoughts on, on data, the future of data, how it's becoming more and more beneficial or, or not so for organizations. And really the, the topic was on you know, the new oil of, uh, of uh, digital banking and, and, and just keen to hear your thoughts and then I'll, I'll, I'll top it up with some of my own thoughts. So sir, maybe starting with you. Uh, thank you, and I think it was uh, both intellectually stimulating discussions and, 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 and useful for bankers like me who are still uh, immigrants to the world of digital, and I consider still to be myself an, an, an immigrant. Uh, when it comes to data, and I think when I looked at the title, I said bankers have the data uh, and the metaphor of oil is used here. I think that what we do not have is the refinery. Uh, then what I mean is a lot of the data we take are static in nature. A lot of our channels do not talk to each other. And therefore, what's missing and the biggest piece in data for uh, bankers and retail bankers is the feedback loop. The feedback loop in the sense when you get a customer doing a transaction, you collect those transactions in the, all the touch points and you don't give a feedback. And what I mean here, and I think that's the biggest opportunity for a retail banker like me, is to go and tell someone who's doing a transactions that, by the way, you could use, if you, you, you have an opportunity to use your credit card and you get an, uh, by buying your, your TV and you get an additional one year warranty. I think that loop, we capture data, it's a lot of it in the static, it becomes over a period of time irrelevant, but I think, and it also, we do not make use of it from a feedback point of view. And over, and what complicates, I think, bigger challenges, we also collect more and more and more to a point that we really can make sense of it. Good afternoon, everybody. Um, actually, when I started my career, uh, I was working for the biggest bank in my country 25 years ago. And uh, if I remember correctly, uh, that was the age of the mainframe. I was programming the mainframe, actually. And banks already had a lot of data about their customers at that time. We talked about the innovation and how innovative the banks are these days, and I fully agree with you that innovation comes in different forms and that we can talk about renovation and innovation. So we at GBM as a system integrator, we truly believe that what the banks need um, is the technology that they can use to better understand their data, first of all. And we briefly discussed about data quality issues as well, uh, to cleanse the data that they have and put it into work. So try to figure out how they can reach out to their clients in a more personalized way to get customer insight to get uh, micro-targeting like the big social media giants has or do these days um, and put all these things together. And we believe for that you need the technology, you need a partner who can help you with that uh, journey. And, um, and I think this is the next imminent thing that the banks needs to do, start uh, using this data in a way that will generate new revenue streams for them. Good evening, everybody. Thank you. The topic has uh, two parts to it. One is data and the other is digital banking. Uh, digital banking itself is uh, evolving and it's still in, uh, if you ask me my own personal opinion, I think it's still a very nascent stage because all we're doing today is offering customers a, a facility to do the banking online, but digital banking goes far beyond just online banking. The other part of the, of the topic is about data and how essential data has become to digital banking. And there is no denying it that in the world that we live in today, data is money. It, it transmits into money right away. 
and therefore banks need to invest a huge amount of money in terms of having to build up IT infrastructure systems that will protect the customer's data because today the biggest fear in the minds of everybody including common men like me and you is my data is with the bank and we have heard of horrendous incidences where you know hacking happens and customer data is stolen in the US even the IRS was hacked so you know there's so much of things that are happening so therefore I think one of the biggest challenges for banks today is to be able to provide the customer with the assurance that their data is absolutely safe. We talk about 15-bit encryption, 32-bit encryption, but still, if we ask the panel, the people here, they would say, we don't know whether our information is safe with the bank or not. And so there is a reluctance on the part of customers to actually go and you know, do the digital banking. So I think in the, as we move into the future, once the customers become really comfortable that their information is absolutely secure, then digital banking will take off in an MTN way. Thank you. Good afternoon. I think I absolutely agree. Like, you know, data is the currency of digital. Whether it's bank, whether it's in any other industry, it is the currency of that. Uh, it's also failing to the, to the new era where we're moving forward to the digital. But it's very pretty much important to understand, like, you know, what kind of data you're talking about? What is the data? Uh, if you're talking about, like, you know, my personal data, privacy data sort of thing, that that's falls into a particular framework, particular, like, you know, uh, 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 retention policies, and as, as my fellow pa panelists have mentioned. And it's become bank's obligatory, uh, like, you know, uh, uh, for, for to, to secure the data. But however, what I wanted to understand, uh, I want to highlight here is that, you know, the, the data or, or which is there with, in the banking system or any of the digital system, which could be unstructured, which I do not understand and which could be part of like, you know, any other interactions uh, coming up. And how this has been able to, uh, to, and we have seen a lot of use cases coming up, like, you know, how this has been able to fuel up the digital disruption or digital journey what banks has been taken care of. I think the very important here is to structure the data, what is the valuable data for me, structured and unstructured data. And when you have find the real valuable ones, like, you know, which is, is, is for me, then to understand that what kind of a pattern I could, I could relate from the data. And that's really helped a bank or an organization or, an, or a business to serve their customer needs and serve their, uh, uh, their, their, their digital journey much better effective way. So it's in the pattern, it is the algorithm, it is the, uh, the, the machine learning part of it or artificial intelligence part of it, but the core of it is, is that data which is coming up. But then to understand, structure it, put it the right data to the right front and then able to understand the pattern is, 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 is the most critical part. Of course, I agree with you, with a fellow panelist of, of the other challenges like, you know, structure, IT, security, encryption, privacy, GDPR, policies, process. All this is prevalent uh, at the moment. Thank you and uh, good, in, good afternoon to everyone. So I think uh, rightly said as by Utpal, so at Infosys Finical, we are the banking system provider. Now what we feel is that we are the custodian of the data, essentially. I mean, so most of the data get processed through our systems whether it's a, our system or any banking system. I think till now we were been storing the data. I think now the time has come to explore that data and help the customer in taking more better decisions and even to help banks to basically sell their key, key uh, initiative and key products to the right customer. I think that is, that is what I feel is a key to the uh, you know, data being the fuel of the next, you know, next uh, evolution or a revolution essentially. Fair. Excellent. So I think um, before turning back to the panel, I just want to get a sense. Do you feel that in your organization you have data quality and data integrity issues? Because nine out of ten banks that I speak to, uh, you know, in the course of my business, they all seem to have the same underlying issue that we can't trust the data, we don't have the golden source, we don't, you know, we can't rely on it and our and our analytics, capabilities, core banking, everything is only as good as the data that goes in. So maybe the question I should reword it is, is there anybody who feels their organization 
have actually cracked this and have a fantastic set of data? And I'd say probably most of you would say no. And with that in mind, I w I'm keen to... Yeah, exactly, exactly. So I think with that in mind, I'm keen to understand from the panelists' view that before you can even start to exploit the data that you have, right, who should take responsibility to address the data quality and data integrity challenges? Because if you think about blockchain, right, yes, it's irrefutable, immutable, et cetera, but even that underlying assumption is that good data is going in only for then the other nodes and other you know, blockchains to benefit from it. So I think it'll be good to get a sense from the industry, uh, from yourself, Mr. Somali, and then some of the other panelists, that who do you think should roll up their sleeves and say, it is my responsibility to get this data thing sorted once and for all, because so much is now relying. You can't put subcategory, sub-quality oil in your car, right? You need the right quality, right? Technology, guys. Interesting. <laughs> How many people and I mean technology and I, should own? I, 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 I mean it when I say the technology, guys. And I, we have, and at least interact with our customers, from the time we onboard them to a life, the full life cycle, uh, multiple times, ev probably every day and every, every month. The ch biggest challenge is, at each customer touch points, you have a very useful information about the customer. That could be a lifestyle, could be anything. The challenge, yeah. Yeah. each channel is, it, at this point of time, from a technological point of view, it doesn't feed into the main frame of the systems. And therefore, I, as a business head, do not get an information that's useful to me to make a commercial decision. Okay. And I think this is, uh, and every time we want to make an, 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 a business decision, it becomes, uh, I need, the right information. And for that right information, sometimes could be sitting in, in, in five, several different locations. And by the time you collate it, I've already lost an opportunity. And I, therefore, that's what I say. It's a task for, an, for a technology people to tell me this data that you have captured uh, across all your channels and all the interactions are stored in one place. And it's relevant. And this is, this is the key part. You could give me a piece of information that is, uh, was an accurate at one point of time. Is it accurate today? Sure. Because if I have a customer that had, or had, had a, a piece of information, salary is uh, an employee of X company with a salary of X, that's what I've captured at that point of time. It could change 24 hours later. Do I have that information and at what channel uh, and what interactions does it really get up in, 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 the, in the game? So it's interesting that Mr. Somali is saying that technology should be responsible for the data. But I'm just thinking that the data is generated by the business's customers. And it's the business that is actually going to benefit from the data. Yet the responsibility should be sitting with somebody else, right? Which I find a little surprising because if business generates the data, it's the business's customers that generate the data and they're the ones who are going to analyze it, then they're the ones who should be, uh, you know, benefiting, then they should be the ones taking more responsibility. What are your thoughts, sir, as a system integrator on that? If I would like to have a joke about this, this is the first responsibility that we put into our proposals, that data quality is with the client, right? So <laughs> we are not responsible for that. Obviously, if, uh, if you think about it, data is the most valuable asset to most of the financial organizations. After 9-11, those who didn't have a proper BCRS or DR set up went out of business on uh, three to six months, right? So BCRS at one time was a big business in IBM. It is still a big business. Uh, if it comes to data quality, I tend to believe that this is actually a process. Uh, data governance is a process, and this is what we recommend to our client, that if it comes to any data-heavy engagement, make sure you have it in place. Make sure you have this governance process set up and ongoing. And like you rightly said, the data is generated by the business. Uh, the data is used by the business. They are the beneficiaries. And again, we as a system integrator are there to help you with the technology. So we do master data management, for example. We do. Uh, data cleansing services, we do, uh, we do have products around data quality. But at the end of the day, and uh, allow me to contradict you, I, I believe this must be owned by the business, fully supported by the technology.
Agree. Yeah. So your thoughts? I mean, obviously, as um, you know, in in the audit assurance etc. business, you'd be yeah a lot about data and and relying and you know, like yourselves, you know, we pass reports. So just keen to hear your thoughts on the data aspect. Uh, Who should own things, it? Two things. Firstly, uh, there's an age-old adage uh, in IT that still holds true. That's part of the fact that we've made so much of progress in IT. Mm. It says garbage in, garbage out. Agreed. Right. So yeah. that hasn't changed at all. So it, uh, as far as the IT, and with all due respect to our panelists, as far as the IT, uh, the person who does the IT, he's automating a process. He's not worried about what goes through the process. He's not going to take responsibility for what goes through the process itself. Okay, what goes to the process is the responsibility of the business managers who actually use the data. So I would tend to agree with him that that's part of the thing. Now, from an audit perspective, for example, although we as auditors, you know, we give a huge set of disclaimers saying that we are like, we are not responsible for this, it's all yours, you know, we're not doing anything, we're just looking at it and saying it's okay, it's not okay. But, the, but more and more regulators have now put upon the auditors onus to at least perform due and reasonable checks to ensure that the data that they are you know, getting, okay, so some, if something could have been detected by you, had you applied due care and diligence in your work, you cannot just pass it off by saying it's not my responsibility, the IT guy did it. You know, we can't do that. So, so how I much think, due care do you think should be applied? How oh, much do you we apply a lot of due diligence care in our audits, but you know, if you look at historically, there have been a huge number of uh, you know, uh, data frauds that have happened. So as an auditor, you can only do this much. I mean, you, so so long as we have, uh, most of the accounting firms have pretty robust processes that help to filter you know, as much as possible. But a colluded fraud where you know, people put data access to you, I don't think it's possible for auditors to do much about it. And blockchain, sir, obviously blockchain is here to take care of the, the data so, issues. <laughs> so yeah, whether it is blockchain or no blockchain, I think, I think all of us, we agree that data is the new currency for growth. And in, in any organization or bank perspective, I think the accountability of data goes to the CEO. CEO himself is accountable for the growth. CEO is accountable for, for, for sustainability. CEO accountable for the experience, what he provides. And CEO is accountable for, for the digital transformations, right? That accountability of data should be taken strongly by senior management, CXO, divided into, into various other functions. For example, CRO, chief regulatory officer, could start looking into the audit part of it, the compliance part of it. CIO or CTO is, is basically to see like what goes in, the sanitization, data master data, what to be kept, what to be not kept, and run the pattern based on the business, which understands what the customer wants, what kind of retention customer is required for, what new products could be coming out of the pattern, so that this input should be going from in between the CSO or chief sales officer or revenue officer or the SBPs on, on various products to the CIO and CTOs to enable, and in between probably some sort of a uh, CDO or, or chief digital officer or chief data officer who can own that and accountability, but it should be coming from the CEO and the board and enforced. Because this is no brainer. If data is my fuel for growth and I am accountable as a CEO and a board of director or chairman of, of the thing, why should I let it go to, to, to I should be taking accountable and, and move forward. I guess I'm gonna say, again, I'm last in the chain, so I am basically summarizing. So just starting with that, I feel uh, actually the ownership stands with the business and the technology together. So technology knows that what data lies in a system, but it is the business who knows the customer well and its products well. So I think that that's, that has to be married together. Otherwise, most of the data warehousing projects for that matter fails because of that. I think one of the key things which Utpal said is about CEO. I mean, it's a mandate from the senior management is I think the key to any, any program, and I, this is one of the critical program. Just to give an example, I want to say, you must have seen my case study that banks who are recently went with their transformation and they adopted our financial analytics. The whole program was managed or rather, uh, you know, sponsored by the CEO. And he's the one who was actually sat down and understood that 
what my business should see and not see, essentially, in terms of, because there is a data security aspect, I mean, you know, there are various things. So I feel personally is that, I think we have summarized it well in terms of it's a technology business and the leadership is what should own the data. Fair. Short space, please. Yeah, the, the, the reason I took a controversial view on this is everyone who sold me a CRMS, and I bought three of them, told me your problem will be resolved as soon as you have a CRM. And everyone who sold me a middleware sold me your problem is the, I will be able to integrate and your problem of, with, to do with data at any touch points will be resolved. I think to the contrary, today they still come back and say business is responsible. Very interesting. Very interesting. But building on some of the points that the fellow panelists are sharing, do you think, are we at a risk of thinking too much about data that, you know, how much data is enough, how much is needed? Or you think the more the better? So do we really understand the full potential? Because my challenge is that organizations are talking a lot about data. They're still debating who should own it, who should run with it. But do you feel that are there organizations that really are able to exploit the full potential, in which case they're able to really quantify, qualify how much more is good, how much more of this is needed. Because in all fairness, I mean, up to a certain point, you put oil in the engine, it works. But after a while, it starts to choke the engine and, and, and nothing moves. So maybe uh, starting from the business and then we'll get the I, I will bring the customer to the center of this. And I think it's interesting. As bankers, we normally assume, and I think we have seen some of the statistics another presenter presented. We assume what the customer wants. Mm. And I think data has a lot to do with that loop that I spoke at initially. The customer should be the, uh, the, the, the judge of how much information is good enough to fulfill their needs. Mm. Uh, right now, what we do is how much do we need to manage risk? That's, that's how we decide. It's an, it's an internal view of the requirements of data. I think the next stage of data is, and, and use of data, has to, we have to bring to the loop. And, and, and customers should tell us, uh, and I'm sure you see in other industries, uh, whether it's on social media, and I'm sure uh, Facebook comes back with you, you are giving you a video of your, it's a, it's a feedback loop, how much information you want to share and what, how useful it is to the customer to uh, update. So I think unless we bring a customer to the center of the data that we're collecting and whether what the information that we have on them is useful in fulfilling their needs, we will be going through that loop of risk management and not beyond. Yeah, again, to me, it's uh, all about your strategy and the approach. So I, I agree uh, most of the industries where we, as GBM working, is customer-centric. Uh, all of them are trying to get this 360 view on their customers. Most of the data they already have inside the organization. But at the end of the day, it's really about how you would like to tackle the market. So you are a conservative guy doing the red ocean approach or you are uh, more innovative who are trying to think out of the box and follow the blue ocean approach. If you think about Facebook, they started with a completely empty database. So they didn't have our data when they started. What they did actually put together a stack of technology, uh, which most of them are open source today, so they just release it to the market, and they convince the clients, their users, to share the data with them. And once they have that in place, that was the time of harvesting. That's when they are started to leverage the value of the data that they have collected. So to me, again, it, what it means that it's really up to the business what kind of strategy would like to follow. Would you like to build this data from ground zero and convince your clients so you can get better inside at the, the end of the day, or you would like to use whatever you already have? So the, the good news is that you can do both ways, right? It's time to market decisions, it's your budgetary constraints, so many parameters are around this, but you can do both ways. Yeah. Uh, I think I tend to agree with you that you know, we, all, we all say today that we're living in an age of uh, what I call information overload. I think every one of us suffers from information overload, whether it's the number of messages we receive on our WhatsApp, which we don't read anymore, or you know, the digital age we live in. Uh, as far as the banking industry is concerned, if we look in that context, then I think it's not just about how much data, but it's about how the data is actually managed. That's very important. You could have tons of data, 
which you could package under different categories. You could categorize them, and depending upon the user's need, the data is fed to the users. For example, if you're talking about the lending function in a bank, okay, they might want data on property mortgages, so that data is important for them, but that's not important for the retail banker who's just giving you know, a, a, a retail function. So it's all about how, and that with today's technology, it can be easily done. So it's not about whether you have too much data or too less data, it's about how useful that data is going to be to the user. And therefore, data needs to be customized to user needs. Absolutely. I think, uh, just to give an anal analogy on that, you know, uh, what kind of a data? I'm a Facebook user. I put my daughter's birthday photos in the Facebook. I go out and I put my location. I on and off share things. But when I saw that news and Cambridge Analytica coming, that because of my data, what I put, a country could be toppled. We could, we could, we could rig completely a, a election. How this data is relevant to the election? How is my daughter's photograph, birthday photos is relevant to the election? There is somewhere a correlation. I think this is where it's very important. It's not about the quantity of the data or what kind of a data. It is most important how to correlate all this data in terms of lending, in terms of retail, or probably uh, in terms of insurance, when you are absolutely right, you know, data from an insurance provider could not be like, you know, relevant for the trade finance guys. But then to able to understand that data and not let it go away in the, in the warehousing project, you know, somewhere like, you know, you uh, archive it, but able to understand and see the, what kind of a pattern you can, you can relate to, and this could actually impact on a business in a, in a decision. And then classic example is Facebook. I mean, most of us has got a Facebook account here, and we do like all mundane things in the Facebook. We share, we, we like, we, we do. But, but when that news came up and those analysis came up that, you know, because of us participating in that knowingly, or maybe unknowingly, uh, it could, could change the, a country. It could topple like elections. It, it could view the, change the view of the world. That is, that is, that is humongously uh, strong. And, and I think this is, this is very, very important. Uh, what I feel is that I think uh, more data or, you know, I'm going to say as information overload. It is correct data at a correct time. I think that is something which is, which is very much needed in terms of when it comes to data. And I guess as a bankers, we actually are sitting on a, on a treasure of a data. It is basically, it needs to be retrieved, needs to be used such a way that as a bank, you can profit out of it or you, know, you can give a better service to the customer. Elias, what Utpal was selling, I'm going to say, on Facebook, I said that I got married, I'm going to say, just engage. And the pop comes saying that, oh, you are, are you looking out for a mortgage, uh, you know, uh, or are you planning for a buying a house? So I feel is that, as a banker, the, while the, we're sitting on a treasure, the fintech, as what you must have seen when I was presenting, I think they are the one they are eating our business just because they have a right data at the right time. So I think that's, that's what I feel, I think, in, in terms of a data. Okay. Excellent. So probably you want to open it up to the uh, audience. We've had you know, some very interesting discussions, but keen to get some questions from audience. I know I was speaking to some of you during lunchtime with some questions. So just uh, would like to open up to see if you have any questions for the panelists and then uh, we can take the discussion forward. Uh, hi, thank you very much for sharing your valuable insight into data. Uh, I would like to ask you one thing and for me data is not human readable. There is like a lot of terabytes of data but I believe what is important is how to get valuable knowledge out of it, how to make a conclusion out of it. And the question is, if you have all these softwares, if you are managing your data correctly, how would you like to extract and what would you do to get benefit out of it? To address the customer or to make your business more robust, to, to earn more money or to have lesser expenses or whatever? Thank you. Okay. So maybe you want to take a bank's view? Or happy to. Yeah. I think just for people's benefit, so if I've understood your question correctly, is with all the data that we have, the, the, the challenge is to be getting meaningful information out of that data. And what is our objective to be getting that meaningful information? So is it to be driving up more revenue, cutting down some costs, or maybe even enhancing the customer experience? 
So, you know, where does the needle uh, stop in terms of organizations and their need for data and then getting meaningful insights out of that data? And, and I, 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 in terms of the relevance and the, and, 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 and the directions of travel uh, to, and the question, I think I completely agree. It's uh, timely, and I think the, the analysts have also mentioned, it's a timely for business to make a decision, you need the right information at the right time. Uh, the challenge that I have as a business head is it sometimes takes days and months to really put together and a piece of information and, 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 and in a form that I can understand to make a decision. Uh, the, and sometimes, it, if in fact, people can, can come and blame on data quality and everything else. Uh, I think the, the, it comes down to, some, and sometimes, by the way, and I think that's an extreme of, of, of what comes out could be uh, pure science. And, and, and I'm not a scientist, and I always say that to an MI uh, and the people who produce all these informations. Tell me what does it mean in, 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 in layman's uh, language. And I think those are the challenges that we have as a business, and we struggle with it. It's the timely uh, of the, uh, the time that it's delivered and the relevance to make an, a decision. Actually, we opened up the enterprise with the digital transformation. So omni-channel mobile applications, data will come, no question. Uh, enterprises should not worry about that because more and more data will come and it will generate more and more data. If you think about it, we, re we already reached a, s a size which cannot be processed by humans any longer. And uh, when we were talking about analytics earlier, uh, we were talking talking about solutions where we knew what we wanted to see. So we were putting efforts into nice reporting and dashboarding solutions. We reach the point now when we don't know what we expect to see from the data. And that's where we need the support of machine learning. That's where we need the support of artificial intelligence. That's where we need the support of sentiment analysis. So we can have timely, real-time decision support at the hand of the business users within these enterprises. That's a good point. I think, yeah, absolutely right. Like, you know, I agree with you. And then just to add up on that, you know, uh, machine learning, these tools, algorithms, like, you know, which is coming up uh, in, the, in terms of AI or in terms of other, uh, other data analytic tools or, or, or algorithms. It's most important is also the human factor. Humans cannot read the data, but human can understand uh, what could be used for the data. Uh, machines are, are evolving. Like we have in the AI, like you know, uh, behavioral and emotional intelligence and cortex are, are coming up. But then you need to fit that that part. So there is a way of, of looking at like you know what we used to do is is is, is uh, sort of a, a dashboarding uh, which is to help us and 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 getting to some sort of uh, pre-determined uh, patterns we need to uh, achieve. But today's world, the way the, the business is moving, the, the digital, the dynamism which is coming up, I think that's only 20% which sits. 80% is it sits on, on how effectively we could, it is either it done by machine or done by a human, how effectively we could look into the data or, or read those data and relate to the pattern. And this has been achieved from from human perspective. There are scientists, there are scientists, uh, and and which is scarce, by the way, uh, uh, which work on those algorithms to build <coughs> it up, and could flag it up to the to the to the management or the business that okay, this is what pattern would could be seen, uh, especially in the security side of it. Cyber security, we have seen it, you know, more and more and more predominantly often, like you know, uh, how this uh, works up, any sort of a pattern which could impact the thing. And this is, is possibility of, of technology, algorithm, machine language, and as well as human. So I just wanted to emphasize that human is not the factor which should be evaded away. So as a, as a sales guy, I'm sensing a, a opportunity here. So I'll come and uh, get your contact details, sir. Uh, just wanted to tell you, I want to say, as uh, coming from a technology vendor, we do have tools for, to help you with that. I mean, uh, if, you, if you find it like a big data, uh, you have a Hadoop, you have a, uh, like what uh, Utpal was selling about dashboarding, then machine learning. So all these tools are available. It is just that how you want it to be 
helping you to take further decision. I mean, the tools are there. Uh, we are, I'm going to say, anytime if you feel I can come down and I can, you know, show you that also, or you, any of your current vendor also can help you with that. Thank you. And good afternoon. Uh, and thank you, uh, all the panelists, for the wonderful insights that we got in the last 15, 20 minutes. I think uh, what we have in the panel is a wonderful mix, people from industry, people from consultant, auditors, and advisory, and obviously from the technology side. Uh, what I have gathered in the last 20 minutes is that we have obviously uh, two, three things, themes that I conclude is obviously we have data integrity, data quality issues that we currently have in the industry. And I, I myself work for a bank, so I'm aware. Uh, we know that, uh, we have acknowledged that data is king, right? Or data is money. Uh, to put it in a different way. So my question will be, we know that we have a problem in hand. We know that we are moving into an era of digital banking and we are trying to, uh, we, we have seen projects where data cleansing thing happens. But what do you think as a panel, what are the three top things that each bank should be doing to ensure that we move successfully into this new era of digital banking? And maybe I think for this one, I'll probably start from the other way and, and hear the bank at the end. Uh, but maybe start from you this time around because I know you've always been summarizing. Uh, so I, I guess uh, I'm going to say we, we summarize this. So three key things which we feel as a technology vendor is that there has to be a leadership coming from, the, from, your, you know, from your leadership standpoint to basically take it as a, as a project which is a very uh, mission critical for the bank. Essentially, as I, as I said, I'm going to say fintechs are on on our door. I'm going to say we should we should be looking at from that angle. That's first thing. Second thing is that I think over the last so many years we have been taking projects for data warehousing, which goes into long gestation and all that stuff. I think we should start with the baby steps. That's the second thing. And third thing is that I think uh, as a technology we have been seeing is that is open source, you know, uh, tools which are which are you know I'm going to say available. Uh, and which can be explored through a technology partner. I think these are the th key three things which we need to, uh, you know, work it out uh, from a technology standpoint is what we, I feel. I think the one, one, I cannot give you three, but I will give you one. The first thing is, is start looking or, or, or segregating digitization from digital. That's the first point of it, like, no? Uh, but mostly we're talking about that integrity sanitization is digitization process. It's not digital yet. Digital, so moving from digitization to digital, it be, should be the first part of it as a strategy perspective. Data integrity, data warehousing, looking at the thing, it's been like last 10, 20, 20 years we have been evolving on that. And we're still there to making it still digitizing. But when you're talking about the real digital, it is, it is touch points where it's real time, mostly near real time, probably. So I think the first key takeaway should be that, you know, you should segregate that from digitization to digital, and then wherever you stand, we can work from, from there. I'm not going to give you uh, three things either, because I don't have three things to say. Uh, I'll process from a very purely commonsensical point of view. Uh, banks essentially, uh, to, to state a truism, are there to make profits for their shareholders. And therefore, all decisions that the bank makes is geared towards that objective. Now, as we understand it, everything is subject, anything that we do, whether it's data analysis, data storage, whether it's going to be digital banking, everything is subjected to a cost-benefit analysis or a risk-return analysis. So at some point in time, we will find that the data that we have or the cost that we need to incur to gather more data and to analyze that data, the cost will outweigh the benefits of doing so. At that point in time, stop and then proceed. with the so, so my giveaway here that any data-driven organization makes sure that you know, this strategical initiative is well understood by all organizational units within, uh, within a bank or other enterprises, and they make it part of their DNA. So we talked about data quality issues, we talked about data processing. These are not separated projects, right? So for a data-driven organization, you need to make sure that this is a continuous endeavor within the organization with the right focus, because at the end of the day, using this data in a proper way will give you a competitive edge, and this is where you would like to get right at the end of, uh, end of the day. 
I'll connect the comment uh, that you made as a moderator, and I think, and, and I think you hear it in every conference. And it is the age of revolution, uh, the age of the, the, the digital age, and the digital revolution will completely change the face of banking. I think I'll extend that and say it will change the face of everything that we know about life. And I think where I am connecting to your question, it comes down to the, and in an institutional level, it comes down to the leadership. When someone makes that kind of a comment, uh, the leadership level uh, of the institutions, whether it's an industry like banks, and more so banks who are skeptical about many things, uh, the comments, there are three types of leadership. They, they respond into three ways. Some of them completely ignore and say, this is another, uh, the comments that are, are, are I am not, I don't think it's gonna change that fast. And I don't think that the banking, the face of banking is gonna change and I will not be impacted so, so much. That's one type. The second type is people who worry about it and worry about it and only worry about it and go to the next conference and the next conference. And the third people, and I think I was, fortunate to realize that uh, and could categorize myself to the third is people who go and go into a structure, learn more about it. And I, when I'm talking about, you will not, and none of us will learn the impact of digital in our lives and in our organizations, unless you go into a structural learning about the digital revolution. Uh, I went and I was fortunate to go into a seven month uh, last year, a structured program to learn about it. I came back, forget about advising the bank, I could not advise my 16-year-old of what she will do next. So I think at it, this whole revolution, I think it starts with leadership. And it's the leadership who has to really come down and say, I should stop worrying about it only and do something about it, which means I need to educate myself about digital revolution and how will it impact the ecosystem that I operate in. Uh, and I think that will is the, is the key determinant. And, and everything else becomes subsets of that, whether it's the data quality that you have and everything else is complete subset of that. Excellent. Well, thank you so much. Uh, that's the time we had for the panel, so I really appreciate it. I'm sure we could keep the discussions going. But really, thank you for your time. Thank you, panelists. And it was a real pleasure to, to be here with you all today. And uh, thank you once again. Thank you.